Hey everybody from YouTube. I uh, just got back from fishing on Memorial Day at uh, the Occoquan Reservoir. Had another fantastic day out there. Uh, this video's got two things on it. Uh, it's got basically me reviewing the pros and cons of the Nico rig. I just discovered that rig a couple of weeks ago and it's fantastic. Wanted to share uh, what I thought were the pros and cons of that rig. And, uh, and also, I've got proof that that rig actually works. I, I caught some great bass out at the Occoquan Reservoir and uh, caught one uh, giant bass, uh, you know, a lunker that was well, well over four pounds. <laughs> and I uh, just had a lot of fun. So anyway, seasoned veterans who are watching this video, if you're familiar with the Nico rig, go ahead and fast forward to the action. Uh, but for those of you who aren't familiar with the Nico rig, I would encourage you to check it out. Like I said, I just discovered this thing a couple of weeks ago and I was pretty impressed at uh, its ability to uh, catch bass. But if I was to summarize this, this is what I would, what I would say, having this out in the field uh, on a couple of fishing trips. Uh, first of all, I have a photo here of what this thing looks like, right? It's basically a, a Cinco worm uh, with a nail weight in the front, um, an O-ring uh, in the middle, and then you basically take your hook uh, circle hook and then you, you put it through there facing the back of the worm and that's basically it. So um, it's got a unique presentation style that I think is incredibly effective. But anyways, here are the pros and cons. First off, the first pro I would say, I agree, this thing catches bass. I've had it out a couple of times and it definitely catches bass, so that's awesome. Second thing is, uh, given the way this is rigged, it's not weedless. Uh, there's an exposed hook and it, like I said, it's uh, exposed to the rear. The, the hookup percentage is quite high. I have not lost a single bass on this rig yet. Um, sometimes I lose them on the Texas rig. Sometimes I lose them on the Carolina rig because both of those are rig weedless. Uh, and you really have to set the hook and sometimes it just doesn't work out. But the hookup percentage is quite high. This is very versatile as well. You know, you can work this thing um, on the bottom. You can just have it stationary, you know, working it up and down on the bottom. You can work it across the bottom, hopping it across the bottom. Uh, you can even work this across the water column, right? If you think that fish are suspended, uh, you can work this thing like a swim bait across a, uh, across a water column. So there's a lot of versatility there. Uh, the thing that I liked about it was that I can cover a lot of water pretty fast with this, uh, with this kind of rig. Uh, now, some people say you should fish it slow. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, but I was fishing it pretty fast and it allowed me to locate these bass pretty quickly, which was pretty cool. Uh, the cons of this rig, I would say, is you're you're going to burn up worms and you're going to burn up uh, parts on this thing. You know, the weight's going to fall out of the front. Uh, the, you're going to lose the O-ring. Uh, the worm's going to eventually break in half. You know, a lot of these worms are very soft. And with the casting that you do, uh, like I do a lot of overhand casting, it, it, it kind of beats on that worm a little bit and breaks it in half eventually. So you want to bring extra pieces of equipment with you. Uh, it's got less feel than a Texas rig. You know, I feel that, in my opinion, uh, the, the, the highest feel rig out there is the Texas rig and I lose a little bit of that but um, a lot of times if I, I have a bump a single bump or I thought I had a bump I'll stop reeling and I'll watch the line you know a lot of times that'll tell you what's going on there uh, this rig is not weedless uh, that's for sure you got an exposed hook you don't want to use this thing in the weeds because you're going to drag weeds with you you want to use something that's weedless like a Texas rig in the weeds um, and this thing does get hung up it will get hung up on timber occasionally uh, just like, you know, like a jackhammer that has a, a, a same configuration of a hook, uh, it, it'll get hung up on timber. But I didn't lose any rigs to the timber. I would just stop reeling, go up, get behind the timber, and eventually it would come off. So anyways, awesome rig. Tearing it up at the Aquan Reservoir, catching some great bass, caught one gigantic bass. Anyways, let's get to the action. Thanks for watching. If you like it, please subscribe. Okay, everybody, uh, water temperature out there on Memorial Day was about 72 degrees. Uh, I'm basically fishing a post-spawn pattern, uh, and I'm looking for basically four to five feet of water uh, that's near deeper water, right? So I'm basically thick, looking for structure that is near deeper water, right? So right now I'm about four or five feet of water up in the shoreline that drops off to about 15 plus feet pretty quickly. That's where I'm at right now, and I'm basically concentrating on, on that structure. That seemed to be a pretty consistent pattern uh, throughout the day there. There's one, there's one. Got him. Gotcha. Oh, that's a little bit nicer bass. Oh, yeah, that's a beauty. Hey. Nice.
pretty fish. Oh, feisty ones too. Um, pretty fish, folks, huh? Nice bass. Oof, boy. Okay, once again, I am fishing probably five foot, you know, it's five or six feet deep at the shoreline there. It drops off pretty quick and then it drops into about 20 feet of water. Now, the thing to keep in mind is um, just because you can't see structure on the shoreline doesn't mean there's actually no structure underneath there. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but this is where your fish finders Ooh, can come one. into handy here's one. to identify structure. This bass was, was submerged in some structure that was near that shoreline, and that's, that's exactly where I got him. Oh, <laughs> Give me a little shit. No, oh, flick my bait away, dummy. I can save my ring. And I used to get so excited when I was fishing when I was little. That's pretty bass. Okay, folks, one thing I wanted to point out here, you know, the Aquan Reservoir is uh, notorious for being incredibly muddy. So I tend to go with brighter colors here. And um, I had a, a yellow and green worm. I, I ran out of them because I busted them up. So I had to switch off to this fluorescent, <laughs> this jet fluorescent green uh, um, worm. Uh, but it was, it was still catching bass. So it was pretty cool. So I would definitely lean toward brighter colors out there if I'm going to oh. fish worms. There he goes. There he goes. Gotcha. Yeah, you got him. What is that? Oh, a little bass. <laughs> gotcha. Wow, you're really small. Gee whiz. On the Cinco. All right. Cool. <sighs> Little bass, but a bass. There's another one. Yep, he's got it. Oh, ah, little bass. Ah. All right, another bass on the Nico rig. Not a shoot. Looks like almost the same. Well, that's a little bit bigger. Still fun. Oh, there's one. There's one. Oh, this one's a little bigger. This one's a little bigger. Oh my god! 
Three of four pounds. Look at him, folks. Uh, isn't he a beauty? Whoo! Lord have mercy. All right, buddy.